11 year old Jaquiel Jackson likes to tell his peers in Chicago to dream big and also think about those less fortunate. Just never forget that homeless people are people too. And what if it was you? With a heartfelt passion to help the homeless in Chicago and around the world with what he has called blessing bags. Uh, his blessing bags have earned Jaquiel national acclaim, including a praise from President Barack Obama who actually tweeted about his charitable effort last year. Jaquiel is motivated, hardworking, driven, confident, and just a great example for the next generation moving forward. This blessing bag has turned into this phenomenon. The grind started out with only just one event that we thought was gonna be a one-off where he would invite some of his friends to just come play some games with him. But the surprise were, before we get to these games, we have to make these blessing bags for the homeless. Little do we know that was going to turn into once a month, twice a month type of thing where we're now distributing these bags to the surrounding homeless people we see in Chicago. What I love most about what I do is being able to see the smiles on people's faces when I give them the bags. And that really motivates me to know that the people that I'm helping actually appreciate it and they feel that I'm doing a good job. I think an another motivation for him is actually seeing people on the street. You know, it motivates him to want to help to figure out how do we eradicate homelessness. That's his whole thing. Like, how do we get rid of it all together? My name is Jaquiel Jackson. I'm 13 years old. I'm the founder of an organization, Project I Am, that has donated almost 50,000 blessing bags. And this is my hustle. Jaquiel started Project I Am officially in 2016. He was eight years old at that point, but he kind of had rumblings in his head when he was five years old. He went to visit the homeless and uh, feed them chili with his auntie and his cousins. And that was his first real interaction with the homeless and how they live. And he wanted to do something about it. I had no idea there were people sleeping on the ground. I thought everybody had homes. So on the car ride home, I asked my aunt like what's going on and she gave me a good explanation and trying to like made me understand better. So then I popped out a random question, you know, I'm five years old, so you can expect this. But I said, could we give them our houses? And I was serious, I, I was not joking at all. So they said, no, we can't do that. And I was like, why? So then we decided to come up with a, like a different idea. And we thought of different things that we have on a daily basis that they don't have. And we thought of blessing bags. Today I'm at my warehouse and we are packing blessing bags. Right now I plan on stuffing 50 bags. So I'm about to get to work. In a blessing bag, you can typically find some toiletry items like hand sanitizers, socks, soap, some tissue, toothpaste, toothbrush, different items that we have that we usually take for granted. I decided to do toiletry items instead of the typical thing like food and clothes because I wanted to do something different, something that can last a little bit longer. We are going to a shelter to pass all these bags that we just packed out. Since COVID happened, it switched to doing me, him, and Jaquil in our living room, taking the entire Sunday to do these blessing bags. And then my mom would come and pick them up and, and take them to a shelter. And as things lightened up a little bit, we were able to do smaller packing parties with four or five of his friends to keep them socially distanced. And they would be able to do the blessing bags. He has been able to reach so many different youth to try to instill in them the importance of giving back to the community in general. For me as a grandmother, I appreciate that because children need that and they need their parents to help them fulfill this stuff. I'm more of a heavy lifter <laughs> <laughs> slash security, security <laughs> slash I'm also in the creative department when dealing with creative ideas like merchandise or event planning. I am here to support Jaquil in every way imaginable. I help him with developing letters and emails, and I'm kind of more on the operations side. Rest in peace, Kobe. My proudest moment is probably, of course, when you know he got to meet President Obama, and President Obama actually knew 
Jaquille's name. It was like six in the morning. I was so tired. I was, I'm sleeping and my mom comes to my room yelling at me, wake up, wake up, Obama's tweeting about you. He like legitimately knew who Jaquille was and was excited to meet him. And it was just inspirational for Jaquille to see someone of that stature recognizing him for the work that he does. So some of the awards that I've won over the years are the Gloria and Barron Award, the Princess Diana Award. I won the one of the CNN Hero Awards of 2019. That was an amazing opportunity for him to be acknowledged on that type of platform. He's also received an award by the Children's Museum in Indianapolis. It's called the Power of Children Award. And along with that award, he also got two college scholarships. Once quarantine happened, this allowed him the time to be able to actually sit back, take a break, breathe, reflect on things that was bothering him at school that we didn't even know was really affecting him as bad as it was with the bullying and the teasing and um, the isolation and things like that. And he decided that he wanted to help other young people who may be going through that same situation and to let them know that they're not alone and that he too experiences those types of things, and here's how he made it through. He came up with these daily affirmations, these wonderful things that he feels about himself that he wanted other young people to feel about themselves. I'm pretty sure the book came about because he needed a way to express his frustrations. I'm a writer as well, so I tell him all the time that I take a lot of my anger out on a poem, a song, or some music, or whatever. So. He has that ability to kind of express himself in different art forms, and I think this book was a good way to get off his chest the things that was happening to him in school. What's up, y'all? Come check me out. I'm at Local Market on 71st and Jeffrey. We're signing books. Yeah, so the book is basically about my story through like sixth and seventh grade with bullying and teasing. Um, and my whole message is to try to encourage others who are going through that and telling themselves affirmations to help them get through that. Thank you so much and congratulations. Thank you. This is so exciting. Listen, you have, are such an inspiration to our young people. Thank you. And I just want you to keep doing what you do. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. K-E-I. Some of the challenges that I face are time management. That's a huge one, especially with school and having to balance that out. Although my parents do do a, a great job of that. You got a, a busy schedule and whether it's today, for instance, with a book signing, then running here to do this. So, you know, when he could get in, I always tell his parents, hey, whenever you can make it, just let me know. We'll find a way to get him in. I do feel like I'm able to add some attributes from basketball court to my organization in terms of teamwork and being able to work with people, especially my parents. He's learning at an early age that that work ethic that he uses on the basketball court, it has to be used in all areas in his life because we're not just trying to have a great basketball player, we're just trying to have a great person. And he's seen that and he's working towards that each and every day. He's an avid basketball player. He wants to be in the NBA, and he also wants to own his own team. I feel like there's gonna be so many blessings that come before that. It's probably gonna be out of his mind by the time high school is over, because he, he's gonna be on a whole different path, probably to become the next black president. <laughs> What's next for Project I Am is Tiny Homes. That's a big thing for me with the organization. I've been trying to do that for like like a year or two years now. Tiny homes are basically tiny houses for those in need and people who are living on the streets. We think that as he's getting older, he's kind of seeing like, okay, he's doing these blessing bags, but he really wants to make an impact. Like he doesn't want to do something that's going to help him just for a week. He wants to make it where they don't have a need to be on the street asking for money or staying in a shelter and you know different things like that. He really wants to be a part of the solution. So hopefully we can help keep him on that track. So one of my favorite quotes is, don't wait to be great. That's the quote that I created. It means that us as young people do not have to wait until we're adults to become change agents or start our own business, because we can do it right now. What my hustle means to me is that the grind and having that work ethic and having 
all these different things that you do and being your best at all of them. It's great to know that my, my organization and my story is getting out to other young people. That's one of the main focus with the organization. It's not only to help homeless, that is a main focus, but another one is to inspire other young people to become philanthropists and own their own business. And being that I'm doing that, that can create a better world that we wanna see. That's another way of, of doing that. What's up guys? Thank you for watching my episode of My Hustle. Make sure to go follow me on Instagram, official project I am. My website is officialprojectim.com. My YouTube is Jaquil Naeem. And those are all the places you can support. And make sure to subscribe to Whistle.